in something. And it marks us as a beacon to the world. We believe that inclusion and tolerance and love and understanding are the way forward for this earth. And we show it every day in New York City. And that, that is why I say to Latino New Yorkers, we stand with you and we will protect you. That is why I say to LGBT New Yorkers, we stand with you and we will protect you. And that is why I say to Muslim New Yorkers, we stand with you and we will protect you. Political leaders, activists, and members of the LGBT community have been gathered outside of the iconic Stonewall Inn since news of the Orlando tragedy emerged, paying tribute to the lives lost in the attacks this weekend and setting a somber tone for the start of Gay Pride Month here in New York. With events scheduled over the next few weeks culminating with the parade at the end of the month, the mayor and the governor have assured us that events will go on with our citizens safe and sound and extra law enforcement on hand. New York City Council member Corey Johnson is among those leaders who organized a vigil outside of the Stonewall Inn last night, and he joins us now. Corey, it's always nice to have you back here. Sorry it's under these circumstances, but let's talk about some of the developments here following the Orlando shootings. Uh, we talked about the, the vigils, the gathering, the iconic Stonewall Inn, and the question that's often raised uh, among members of the public is, on the heels of something like this is uh, those types of public expressions of sympathy and support, getting out there, so many people getting out there. Is that a good idea or does it create potential targets for some people out there who, who sadly might be inclined to violence? I, I think all of us are grieving right now. And I think that these vigils and gatherings, especially in front of an iconic historic place like the Stonewall Inn, are a really important part of the grieving process for uh, New York and for America and for the LGBT community. Uh, collectively, we have to grieve. Uh, I have the utmost confidence in the NYPD and our counterterrorism officials to ensure that these uh, events are handled and safe. Uh, but, you know, this, this bar, Pulse, this dance club Pulse, that was a public place. And the history of the LGBT rights movement in our community have been that bars and clubs have been our safe havens. Yeah. They have been the places that we go to express ourselves. Let me ask you about that. They have been sanctuaries over the years, especially before people were comfortable coming out in the public. They would know there's a place where I can go here and I can be comfortable. Do you see this as an attack on those sanctuaries? Or should the folks who, who frequent them, who feel comfortable there, should they continue to feel comfortable? Well, I think it was no coincidence that this happened uh, at uh, a gay club on a busy Saturday night. And, uh, you know, part of the psychology of terrorism, part of the psychology of these attacks on our freedom and expression is to try to get people to stop being themselves. And in America and in Western society, we have said we are not going to give in to that. The gay community a year ago was celebrating a Supreme Court decision on marriage equality gathered outside of the Stonewall Inn to celebrate joyously. Now we gather to grieve and to mourn and to remember members of our community. And we are not going back in the closet. We are not going to stop being who we are. But there's, I think, a very important thing to say which is just because marriage equality exists and just because we can serve in the military, the fight is not over for LGBT people. There is still violence. There is still homelessness. There is still parental rejection. Uh, it is still unsafe to be gay around the world in many places. And so there is still a lot more to do. I think what's frightening here is that <clears throat> we've experienced debate and discussion and discourse, sometimes very animated, sometimes even angry about this issue. But when all of a sudden we see that violence, any kind of violence, but especially violence to this extent, how surprised were you about the fact, when you learned the fact of where this attack took place and who these victims were? You know, Jack, I don't, I don't want to get emotional, but I feel, I feel sick to my stomach, and I felt sick to my stomach for 24 hours. The largest uh, shooting in American history, but 
when you actually start to hear about the stories of these individuals with families and 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 uh, husbands and wives and children, some people just starting their lives in college, these were real live people. And uh, many of these folks were people of color, LGBT people of color, who were out dancing and enjoying a Saturday night in a place that they felt safe. This is tragic, it's senseless, and uh, the scary thing for me is that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. These AR-15 assault rifles should be banned. These are military-grade weapons. There is no reason to have them. And inaction by political leaders are now causing people to die. In the last 20 years, there have been two mass shootings in Australia. And in the last week, there have been eight in the United States of America. Australia doesn't allow assault weapons. We do. This is an epidemic and it's a pathology. Why do you think? And, and obviously when you get into the gun rights debate, um, there are, are many nuances within that. It's not as black and white as some people would have it to be. But why do you think when we have a, a tragedy such as this, you look back at 9-11 and it, it united us as a nation. You look at this tragedy, and there have already, we've already seen fault lines in the reaction to it. People saying it, it's, it's all about gun control or gun safety. Other people saying, no, it's all about jihadists and, and the Muslim religion. What is it about this, do you think, that, that keeps us from, from rallying together and figuring out some, so whatever it might be, some solution? Well, the sad and sick thing about this tragedy incident we saw on Saturday night is that it's a combination of many things. It's terrorism, it is a radical jihadi uh, thought, it is uh, violence against LGBT people, it comes down to gun control and hate crimes. It is all of this potent, emotional, difficult stuff all wrapped up into one incident. So a, a, a confluence of all of these, as you said, difficulties, things that we're wrestling with in society, and they all found themselves inside of the Pulse Club. Yes, and it, and it doesn't have to be uh, black and white. As you said, you know, these are, this is complicated and it's nuanced. It can't, it doesn't just have to be terrorism. It can be terrorism and a hate crime and easy access to assault rifles and a terrorist ideology. It's all of these things wrapped up in one. It is my hope that political leaders in Washington uh, will finally do the right thing so that President Obama does not have to keep coming out, giving speech after speech in the aftermath of San Bernardino and Sandy Hook and uh, Virginia Tech and Fort Hood and now Orlando. It is sick. Last question for you, what's the message that you have as a civic leader to your constituents, other people here in New York City, in terms of our safety and in terms of what we should take away from this? Well, you know, people should be, uh, you know, self-aware uh, and be on the lookout and report anything that they find to be suspicious. But at the same time, we should not in any way change how we live our lives. That is what makes our country great. That is what makes our city the best city in the world. We have to continue to be a free and open uh, society, but we need political leaders to take action. People are losing their lives. The same rifle that was used on Saturday night was the same rifle that mowed down four-year-olds in Newtown, the same rifle that killed 14 people in San Bernardino. We have to ban these rifles. It is time for Congress to take action. Americans are losing their lives. Corey, as I said at the beginning, it's always good to have you here share your thoughts. Sorry it's under these circumstances. We'll look forward to having you back again sometime under better circumstances. You take care. Thank you, Jack.